The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster fueled worldwide doubts over the merits of nuclear power. In Japan, political leaders are debating whether or not to restart nuclear plants. At present, the country's electricity supply is, for the first time in 42 years, nuclear-free. Another dilemma Japan faces is whether to abandon the decades-long objective of establishing a self-sustaining nuclear fuel cycle. In today's Nuclear Watch, we take a closer look at what has been a pillar of Japan's nuclear policy. Given its limited natural resources, Japan decided in 1956 on a policy to reprocess spent nuclear fuel and use the plutonium extracted in that way. The plutonium was to fuel fast breeder reactors, which theoretically produced more plutonium than they consume. But plans to put fast breeder reactors into use have been stalled since an accident at the prototype reactor Monju in 1995. The project is already running 60 years behind schedule. Another key facility for recycling fuel is the Rokasho reprocessing plant in northern Japan. It was supposed to start operating around 1990, but a series of problems prevented it from going fully operational. After having spent about 3 trillion yen, or more than $37 billion on the two facilities, government officials have asked experts to review the recycling policy. This uh, new stance reflects the aim of reducing Japan's reliance on nuclear power. We're talking about big policy changes, so we're facing many challenges. Hidehiro Hanada is a reporter at NHK World who has been following Japan's nuclear energy policy. Hidehiro, when it comes to Japan's nuclear, uh, especially its recycling uh, policy, what are some of the options that the country has? Hi. There had been a lot of debate over the future course of Japan's nuclear policy even before the accident at Fukushima, but since the government decided to review its nuclear policy from scratch, a panel of the Atomic Energy Commission has been studying various options from a perspective of economic efficiency and necessity. The main question here is whether to maintain the current costly nuclear fuel recycling program which is unlikely to be completed anytime soon. And this month, the panel presented three options. First, the option to continue reprocessing all spent nuclear fuel. Second, a complete disposal, meaning burying all spent fuel in the ground. And third, to continue reprocessing and postpone its final decision until 2030. The panel estimated a cost of disposal or the impact of a policy change based on the different scenarios for Japan's future reliance on nuclear power. And it has concluded that in any of these scenarios, the cheapest way is the direct disposal of all spent fuel. But if the reprocessing program is abundant, spent fuel stored in Aomori would end up with nowhere to go, and nuclear power plants in Japan would not be able to be restarted. Each option has the pros and cons. Now, Japan is not the only country that uses nuclear uh, energy, other countries too. What are some of the approaches that the other countries are taking? Hi. The United States, France and Russia used to do research on nuclear fuel recycling to make effective use of resources. France, which was most advanced in this field, used to operate Super Phoenix, a demonstration fast breeder reactor, but suspended its operation due to a series of problems and rising costs. But Japan did not give up the plan for fast breeder reactors. FBR has been a centerpiece of its nuclear fuel recycling program. On the other hand, France, Russia and China began a research on fast reactors as a means of reducing radioactive wastes. So once again they are paying attention to nuclear fuel recycling. Japan possesses a lot of plutonium because of the many reactors that the country has. Um, any change in, of course, Japan's policy for its nuclear uh, energy policy as well as its recycling policy is likely to attract uh, attention from abroad. When can we expect a final decision on this matter? Hi. The options will be presented to a government panel on energy and environment, and the panel is expected to make a final decision this summer. 
As a country with limited natural resources, Japan has spent a huge amount of money into the nuclear fuel recycling program, but commercialization of fast breeder reactors would not be possible until 2050. After the accident at Fukushima, the government decided to reduce dependence on nuclear power, but whatever the percentage of nuclear power would be in the total energy mix, the government must figure out what to do with final disposal of radioactive wastes and explain to the public at home and abroad why it chose that particular plan. All right. Hidehiro, thank you very much. Hidehiro Hanada for today's Nuclear Watch. Now, a government advisory panel reviewing Japan's nuclear fuel recycling policy held several closed-door meetings with representatives of the nuclear industry. It provided them copies of its draft report before making it public. The six-member panel of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission compiled a report on nuclear fuel recycling last week after holding open study meetings beginning in January. Since December, the panel also held more than 20 closed-door sessions with organizations involved in nuclear fuel recycling. These include the Natural Resources and Energy Agency and the Federation of Electric Power Companies. At a closed meeting in late April, the panel distributed its draft report with a note that the document should be handled discreetly. The head of the Atomic Energy Commission, Shinzuke Kondo, also attended the first four of the closed-door sessions. Critics say the government commission should explain what was discussed at the meetings with industry representatives. Members of a government advisory panel reviewing Japan's nuclear fuel recycling policy are being criticized for having a cozy relationship with the nuclear industry. They held a number of closed-door meetings with industry representatives, and they also shared copies of a draft report before making it public. The six members of the panel from the Japan Atomic Energy Commission compiled a report last week on nuclear fuel recycling. They started holding open study meetings in January. Panel members also held more than 20 closed-door sessions between December and April with organizations involved in nuclear fuel recycling. The groups included the Natural Resources and Energy Agency and the Federation of Electric Power Companies. The panel distributed its draft report in April, along with a note saying the documents should be handled discreetly. Atomic Energy Commission head Shunsuke Kondo was among those who attended the first four of the closed-door sessions. Critics are demanding members of the government advisory panel explain what was discussed at the meetings with industry representatives.